All right, Alexander, let's talk about uh, Libya and uh, the complicated situation in Libya and what's playing out there with the conflict which involves many different countries and many different sides to this, uh, to this story. Let me take you to an article, Alexander, from uh, John Helmer, Dances with Bears. And the article is titled, In Libya, Turkey Hasn't Won Yet, Russia Hasn't Lost Yet, the U.S. and its protectorate of Greece, Cyprus, and Israel are losing everything. And let me read you two paragraphs from the beginning, two, three paragraphs from the beginning of that uh, article, and you can comment on them. If the war in Libya continues the way Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan thinks it has gone in recent days, the eastern Mediterranean will be a Turkish sea for the first time since Napoleon defeated the Ottomans and took Egypt and Syria between 1798 and 1801. But with Russia engaged against the Turks on the ground, in the air, and at sea, not yet. In escalation of the civil war in Libya in April and this month, Turkey has added ground forces from Syria, as well as Navy frigates, Air Force F-16s, and the capture of the al Wattiya air base west of Tripoli. The Turkish side has now created a reinforced corridor for ship and airborne supplies of men and arms into Libya in support of the government of National Accord, the GNA, led by Fayyaz al-Sarraj. The Greek Air Force has watched the Turks go by with aerial antics and diplomatic protests amounting to a white flag. No Greek or Cypriot military source has issued an appreciation, let alone criticism, of this historic route of the Hellens in their own territorial waters. Russia has reinforced the capability of the Libyan National Army of General Khalifa Haftar to deter the Turks. And in an operation with MiG-29s earlier this week, attacked a Turkish frigate off the Libyan coast and a Turkish freighter in Tripoli port. The U.S. has taken the Turkish side, announcing through Army General Stephen Townsend, commander of the U.S. Africa Command in Frankfurt, Russia is clearly trying to tip the scales in favor, in its favor in Libya, just like I saw them doing in Syria. So Alexander, John Helmer, in the first, pu the first couple of paragraphs mentioned, of course, Libya, I mentioned Turkey, Erdogan, Russia, Greece, Cyprus, the USA. What's going on in Libya at this moment in time? It's complicated. So, absolutely, hugely complicated. And of course, there's all these very multiple players. Um, um, Libya, Libya is obviously a battleground for various proxies and various pro proxy interests. I, I'm going to qualify what I think um, Helmer says. I, I mean, I agree with some of it. I don't agree with him overall in the sense that I think the Turkey at this moment in time looks unequivocally like the winner in this struggle in the sense that the government that Turkey is backing, which is the Tripoli based government led by Al Sarraj, is, uh, which was very much on the back foot a few months ago when General Haftar's forces were closing in or appeared to be closing in on Tripoli. Um, as a result of massive Turkish intervention, General Haftar's forces have been pushed back the Al Sarraj government looks much stronger than it did. It's actually regained much more territory, I think, than Helmer um, is saying. And it, it's beginning to look now as if it's very secure. So we've gone from a situation where it looked a few weeks ago as if General Haftar might become the paramount leader of Libya and reunite in Libya under his rule to a situation where, at best, there is a stalemate between um, al-Sarraj and the Tripoli government and General Haftar's forces in eastern Libya, and perhaps a brokered compromise between them. Either way, Turkey is now embedded in Tripoli, in, the, in that area of um, Libya, backing the um, government the internationally recognized uh, government of Libya, and in very much the way that Helmer says, they have uh, um, enhanced, the Turks have enhanced very strongly 
their strategic position in the eastern and central Mediterranean. So I, 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 I would qualify some of what Helmer is saying there. I think the Russians, I, I think, are playing a completely different game from the one that Helmer is saying. In that I don't think that their objective is to roll Turkey back or to help Haftar take Tripoli. I think that they are not actually terribly engaged in Libya. I don't think it is very much their major strategic interest. What I think they're trying to do is to try to hold the position, try to establish some kind of a balance of power in Libya, whereby Haftar retains control of the West, of the East, sorry. Siraj is embedded in the, in, in the West, um, Egypt, which is uh, a friend of Russia, has its interests with uh, um, uh, Haftar in the east, and those are protected. And uh, at the same time, we see Turkey and Siraj, Al Siraj, and his government in Tripoli dug in in the west. So the the Russians are playing a balance of power game, and that's what the you know, the arms supplies. To, Al, to Haftar were all about to prevent a rout of his forces, not to reverse the gains that the Turks have achieved. And it's striking that over the last uh, two days, uh, Putin, uh, the president of Russia, has been on the phone and he's been talking both to General al-Sisi, who is the president of Egypt, which backs uh, um, Haftar, General Haftar, and to uh, President Erdogan of Turkey, who, of course, backs al-Siraj. But as of this moment in time, despite the Russian mediation efforts, let's be absolutely clear about this, the Turks have won a major, a major uh, uh, you know, victory, it seems to me, in Turkey, in Libya, sorry. They have consolidated the government they support there, and they back their position very solidly there. And they've established, I think, uh, uh, a permanent or at least semi-permanent presence in Tripoli. Now, I think that al-Sisi was sensing that the situation has hit a, some sort of uh, stalemate, some sort of stasis. And he was he's actually now pushing as well for some sort of uh, power sharing government in, in the diplomatic solution. It looks like Erdogan is, is balking at that. It seems like Erdogan is actually thinking that he could push to take even more territory. So what's going on there? Well, that's it. I mean, this is the only thing the way Erdogan, where I think he might lose the game, is if he overplays it. Um, he made an extraordinary inflammatory speech just a, just a, two days ago, in which he basically said that Haftar was history and implied that al Siraj's forces are going to roll all the way through Libya, all the way to the Egyptian border. I think if that happens, then an Egyptian intervention to stop him doing it is highly possible. And of course, we see Russian forces, you know, MiG-29 fighters, not, I think, by the way, piloted by Russian Air Force personnel, most probably piloted by mercenaries. They, these are aircraft, by the way, MiG-29s, that it seems did not come directly from Russia. They're ex-Syrian Air Force MiG-29s, supplied by Syria via Egypt, to Haftar and replaced by the Russians with more advanced and newer MiG-29s, which have recently been supplied to Syria. So it's a sort of strange sort of circuitous thing. But anyway, I think that if Erdogan overplays his hand, if he tries to march all the way to the um, Egyptian border, then he could find that all of his gains um, unravel. And I think that is what Putin is warning him against. And that's what uh, al-Sisi is also trying to prevent. So that's that's Erdogan's, uh, the risk Erdogan uh, runs. He's perhaps someone who tends to overplay his, uh, his, his, uh, his hand. And that's the risk he runs. But I think if he has the sense to draw back and pull, it, pull in his gains, He's actually gained an awful lot. And power sharing government, difficult to see exactly how that would, could work. I can imagine that there might be some kind of you know, umbrella overall. 
that you know might might you know share certain things perhaps some of your revenue for example but overall i think we will the best that could happen would be al siraj firmly entrenched in tripoli and tripoli by the way and the area around it accounts for more than half of libya's population haftar controlling the much less uh, densely populated um, eastern re eastern regions of trip of, of Libya and some of the oil wells and of the two in some kind of stalemate with each other. Hmm. Well, before I get into what I've listed out to be Erdogan's gains and all of this, yeah. real quick, Erdogan has achieved these gains because Turkey has asserted itself with air superiority. Yeah. Yes. Can Egypt take that away from him? Yes, I mean Egypt has a powerful air force. It's got modern modern aircraft. It's actually importing even more modern aircraft from Russia. I mean, so you know, Egypt could potentially do it, but I think for Egypt to become involved in the in the Libyan war would uh, uh, and basically to confront Turkey in Libya would be a major a major gamble for an Egyptian government, which obviously has its own domestic problems. So there, 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 there are those issues. I think the Egyptians would prefer a negotiated solution. But of course, if this um, escalates to the point of Erdogan is he marching all the way to the um, Egyptian border, then, then the Egyptians might intervene and they could potentially counter um, um, Turkish forces in Libya. So, you know, it, Erdogan needs to play his cards carefully and he doesn't always do that. But at the moment, he looks like a winner. And I think we need to understand that. And I think uh, where I do agree with Helmer is that the Greeks and the Cypriots and the Israelis look like losers. They have allowed, or rather they've been, they haven't allowed because, I mean, they haven't had the strength to stop Erdogan doing these things. But, you know, they, they need to consider that their European and American allies haven't really backed them in this kind of in this conflict. No, they haven't backed them, and they will not back them. And I mean, that's the lesson that that Greece will never learn, and Cyprus will absolutely. never learn. Is and I've absolutely. said it over and over and over again. The like, United I'm, States and NATO will always choose Turkey. Always. I, always. I, I, the only country they'll choose above Turkey is Israel. But when it comes to geopolitics, Israel won. Turkey too. That's just the rules of geopolitics. The Greeks have never been able to understand that, and they never will understand that. But anyway, let me, and just to finish off on that point, me being here and seeing how the politicians and the foreign ministers of Greece and Cyprus mm. have continued to just go on all the news channels and talk about EU solidarity and our friends in Brussels and the EU headquarters have said that they're fully behind us and they support us. And all this stuff is is so laughable. It's Absolutely. so sad to see it. It's so sad to see it. No, to see that Greece and Cyprus, they just don't understand that they have to take some sort of initiative. I'm not saying a conflict, but some sort of diplomatic initiative on their own. Break away from this damn EU prison that you've put yourself into. Because the EU is not going to do anything for you here. Zero, absolutely zero. I Greece and Israel have to find a way to engage with Turkey on a diplomatic level to solve this. Real I quick, what do you think of that? I entirely agree. And can I just come back to this? I mean, the, as you correctly said, the European Union is never going to withstand, stand up to Turkey in Libya or anywhere else. Where, where have they ever done so? Um, the United States, as you absolutely rightly say, will always in the end, in these kind of conflicts, back Turkey. The one country that might have stood up for Greece or Greek interests and historically has tended to do so is Russia. So what have we been doing over the last year? Blew it, blew it. We, we blew it, exactly. I mean, we've been saying, I mean, I, to be very clear, I am not someone who wants Greece to, you know, get into, an, into issues with the United States. I understand that Greece is an ally of the United States, but we tilted, Greece tilted too much in favor of the United States and Cyprus. and Cyprus too, and they annoyed the Russians. 
they annoyed the Russians over, you know, uh, uh, Macedonia and expelling diplomats and all that nonsense. They annoyed the Russians over the Orthodox Church issues with the with Ukraine. And so, as I said, the Russians say to themselves, why should we pick the coals out of the fire for the Greeks in Libya and elsewhere when the Greeks pay us back in this way? So, you know, I, I, obviously Greece is a member of NATO. I understand that. But antagonizing the Russians in that way was most unwise. And we now see the price. <laughs> It was called Jeffrey Pyatt, Alexander U.S. Ambassador Jeffrey Pyatt, who was in Ukraine. He tilted it. He tilted it, at least for Greece's part. He tilted it too far. Greece and Cyprus have always been good at keeping a 70-30 split between U.S., NATO, and Russia. 70% yes. U.S., NATO, Russia, U.S. and NATO, 30% Russia, keeping that uh, that diplomatic balance. Correct, correct. Now they've gone 95 98%. Exactly. 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 And we see the, and we see the consequences. I mean, so what Helmer says, by the way, Helmer has a long uh, uh, and very close involvement with Greece. He's very sympathetic and favorable to Greece. But I'm, I'm sorry to say this. I think that there is an element because he's very pro Greek, that there is a, an element of wishful thinking there in that he expects the Russians to come to Greece's rescue and Cyprus's rescue in Libya. I don't see that happening. From the Russian point of view, they have no particular interest in Libya anyway. They would rather see a brokered compromise. And where Greece and Cyprus are concerned, well, at this moment in time, Greece and Cyprus have not been friendly towards them. So why should they help either country with the problems they're having with Turkey? I think this is a big lesson that Athens and Cyprus N N Nicosia need to learn, but as you rightly say, they never do. I mean, it's very, very exasperating. It's a strategic uh, uh, blunder. Yeah, it's a, a strategic blunder. A massive strategic blunder. Exactly. And and I think the diplomats, just to wrap it up, and I'll go on to what I think Erdogan really accomplished in uh, Libya. Mm -hmm. Just to wrap it up, your opinion. I think the Greek and the Cypriot uh, diplomatic core. They use the EU as a crutch always. Instead of making decisions, bold decisions, they yeah. just always defer to the EU. And this also carries over to finance as well. They just say, oh, well, we'll defer to the EU having our back. And that's what they go on onto the TV channels and say. Yeah. And everyone sits there and says, oh, okay, well, the EU has our back, so we really don't need to make bold initiatives. Well, that's right. I mean, it's a lazy, it's a lazy, complacent yeah. policy, which always fails. <laughs> because at the end of the day, the EU... Um, will never stand behind you. They never do. They cannot. They have they, cannot. They, they lack that ability. I mean, they can't sort out their own affairs. How are they going to back Greece? At the end of the day, when Greece takes a strong position on its own, as it did, by the way, over the migrant issue a few you know, weeks ago, then, then when it becomes clear that Greece is standing on its own and is taking a strong position, then perhaps the EU position, the, the EU support will come. But if you defer to Brussels and wait for them to do something, well, nothing ever happens. The Turks will run uh, right, right, right over you, which is what has happened in this case. Excellent point. When Mitsotakis, the Greek prime minister, took a, str a strong stance on the borders in Evros, Greece came out on top. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great point. In this scenario, in this case, they're just, they, they didn't do it. They no. didn't do it. And so this is what happened. And a lot of these points Helmer makes in his article, mm. but this is what happened. Erdogan took a, and you can comment on this, we'll wrap up the video. Erdogan took a playbook out of Syria, mm -hmm. how Russia was invited by the Syrian government and they intervened and turned the tides. Erdogan, in much the same way, did it for Libya. He got the government to invite him. He came in, turned the tides. He was able to shift a lot of his fighting forces in Syria, get them out of there, move them to Libya, another accomplishment. He was able to block the East Med pipeline by signing a deal with that Libyan government in Tripoli and completely block the entire East Med pipeline. He laid claims to territorial waters, which are definitely not Turkey's. Sorry, everyone that's watching from Turkey. Those territorial waters are not yours. Just look at a map. Any mm -hmm. map will tell you they're not. But nonetheless, Erdogan was able no. to create that doubt yes. on the international stage and claim that they are Turkey's and block the entire East Med yes. pipeline going from Israel into Greece. He accomplished that. 
And finally, Alexander, and Helmer makes this point, he's able to once again hold the migration, the migrant card over EU by saying, if you guys screw with me now, maybe I, I, I don't have all the leverage that I used to have in Syria, even though I still have those 3 million refugees that I can flood Europe with. Maybe that hand is a little weaker, but you know what? Now I've got Libya. And if you guys mm -hmm. screw with me in Libya, I'm just going to send all kinds of migrants into Italy and Europe and screw with you guys again. Exactly right. I mean, I, I agree with every single point you made. I totally agree. That's why I say he's come out. Let's be absolutely clear about this. He's come out the clear winner. Now, as I said, he's, he's someone who has history of screwing up. As I said, if he overplays his hand, it could go wrong for him. But at this moment in time, he's not doing it. He's talking to Putin, which is sensible. And if if he sticks to the, ga the, the gains he's won, he comes out an absolute clear winner out of all of this. He is won on every single every single point, and he looks like the master of the situation in Libya. And I agree with you, by the way. He has learned a lot from what the Russians did in Syria. He's applied all those lessons to Libya, and he's done it well. Hmm. We'll leave it there. We'll see how this situation unfolds. Mm. Do, you, do you have any timeline you think this thing's going to drag on? How do you, real quick? I think, I think it's likely that we will see a negotiation fairly soon. I mean, Putin and uh, LCC are now talking. I think we're probably going to see some kind of a meeting somewhere, a, a meet, a, a, possibly in Moscow. Moscow is a place where these sort of things happen. But I think that um, the best um, countries like Greece and Cyprus and Al Hafta can hope for is some kind of freeze of the situation on the ground which will leave, as I said, Turkey's gains intact. So, you know, it may be, it may be that we will probably see, we will see some kind of solution to all of this within perhaps two or three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. We'll be reporting on it. We certainly uh, will. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Smash that like. Drop us a comment. Also, comments really help out the video. And donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. Your donation really helps out a lot. Also, go to the Duran shop. Pick up some merchandise. We got magic mugs and some new magic mugs as well. We got a lot of cool merchandise t-shirts and some new t-shirts as well. And also, go to our friends at the Patriotic Legacy. The Patriotic Legacy, pick up a Patriot Beacon 3, 20% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. off when you use the code Duran20 at yeah. checkout. It ships internationally. This is the Swiss Army knife of flashlights. It's made in the USA. It is amazing. Great flashlight, Alexander. Duran Shop, Patriotic Legacy. What do you think? I mean, absolutely. This is, this is I mean, uh, a flashlight in the US. We say a torch in Britain. Whichever, whichever word you prefer, this is the best. There is. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. As Alex said, it's beautifully made. It's incredibly strong. It's very rugged. It feels, frankly, unbreakable. Uh, um, and it's got every accessory you could possibly want in a torch like this. Firstly, it's got an amazing beam, incredibly strong, clear, beautiful light. You can see very far. You can dim it a little if you need to, because, you know, if you're in closed space or if you're on a road and you want to alert people to your presence you can you can turn it into a sort of flash uh, light like that you've got it solar powered so you don't have to worry about batteries all you need to do is to keep it in the sunlight and it won't uh, expire on you at the wrong moment because it's so uh, it's got solar power and you can even if you need to it's got a port there so you can recharge your smartphone your laptop your tablet um, if you run out, if, if those run out. So, you know, that's how helpful it is. If you get lost, there's a compass here at the handle. Um, if you're using it in your car and, you know, you have an accident, perish the thought that it happens. Well, it's great because you can smash open your windscreen. You can escape that way. You can, you've got a seatbelt cutter. You can cut through the seatbelt. You've got a magnet, by the way, that you can push on the side of your car. You've got a metal place or you've got a metal place in your house. You can you know, put it there so you can put it out of the way. And last but not least, if you want to alert someone to your presence, it's got an alarm. 
So it's got every conceivable accessory that you could have. As Alex says, it's the Swiss knife, the Swiss army knife of uh, uh, flashlights or torches. It is beautifully made, made in the USA, uh, uh, the best quality product, the best torch or flashlight you can have. And I just add, it ships internationally also. So wherever you are, you can't be without one of these and you can get it supplied to you uh, from the US and Alex will tell you how at the end of this program. So those that's our that's the patriotic be the Patriot Beacon from our friends at Patriotic Legacy. We also have our own amazing products, our magic mugs, our t-shirts, our uh, a, a long sleeved and short sleeved, our polo shirts, our v neck shirts, and of course, hats, hoodies, and stickers, all of extraordinary quality, as I've said many times on our program. But the amazing thing is, lots of new products now on our shop. Amazing things. You can find them all there, all of that same extraordinary high quality that so many of our viewers love. And of course, you support the Duran by buying them. So go to our shop, find out about these amazing things that are there, and also get yourself a Patriot Beacon. Alex will tell you how to do it. Just go to the DuranShop.com. You'll find a link in the description box down below, and you'll also find a link to the Patriot Beacon at Patriotic Legacy. That website, you will find a link for it down below in the description as well. Alexander McCurse, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.